What's going on guys? This is Heath from Heath Smith Photography and we're going to be start doing weekly edits. And the first image we're going to start working on is the Busan South Korea skyline shot. I took this a few weeks back when I was in Korea visiting family and we're going to go ahead and edit this to make it go from this shot right here to the final image of this. And it's all going to be done in Photoshop or Nick Color Effects Plus. So let's get going. Here's the first shot straight out of the camera. You can see that it is taken with A7R hence by the pixel count, and it was shot with the 10 to 18 f4 OSS lens at 14 millimeters. I know this is a crop sensor lens and everyone gives me crap about it, but as you can see here, it's a sharp image and it's sharp with a crop sensor lens and it works beautifully from 12 to 17 millimeters and it's super small. So I'm not going to say that it's the best lens in the bunch, but it definitely beats a lot of other lenses out there. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this image balance to take it into Photoshop so I'm not having to do a lot of work to try and recover the highlights or the shadows. So kind of go down the highlights a little bit, come up on the shadows. We're going to go down to the sharpening, get rid of the sharpening because we're going to deal with that in Photoshop. No noise reduction because it's shot at ISO 100, enable profile correction, and remove, remove chromatic aberration. And see that once you hit that enable profile correction, it brightens up everything around the sides. We got a little bit of lean here because I had it just resting on the ground. We're going to go ahead and hit auto, and that should take care of most of the building warp and making it nice and level. Once that's done, we're going to go straight over into Photoshop. Once I'm in Color Effects Pro, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the dynamic contrast. This is going to make the image pop a little bit more. Correct contrast is going to make it balance out a little bit, but it also darkens and brightens a little bit in weird areas, so I just like to play with it just a little bit. On the correct color cast, this is where you can see how close your white balance was. So as you can see here, it's really yellowish. On the other end where it's at right now, it's a little bit bluish. So I'm going to split the difference, warm it up, but I'm going to leave it about 30%. As you can see, that it's really making the image a lot better now. Another filter I'm going to add is I'm going to go over here to Polarizer. Since I want to make the sky and bring out a little bit more of the blues and saturate them a little bit more, easiest way to do this is just pump this thing up really high. You might not leave it there, but start rotating it around and see where you kind of like it. If you leave it right down here, you might get around really saturated blues, or you can balance it out a little bit more. So we're going to go there, we're going to bring it back a little bit, and that's going to be looking good. But a fun thing about this is that if you don't want it on the buildings, you want to keep those buildings a little bit warmer color because it does blue them down, you go ahead and add the plus tab. And this will actually create a layer mask inside of Nick program. So you can see that only the white is getting affected, it's going to turn blue. So go ahead and click on that and then command C and then command B to duplicate it again so you don't have to go over. And you're just gonna go all the way through and we're gonna just add it in only to the reflection. But you can see that the buildings are definitely getting brought out. So you go here negative and then command C, command B, right on the buildings again. And this is going to remove the buildings from the mask. So you're going to only have the blue inside the sky. And remove that so you can see it. And see how the buildings don't change a whole lot. But the sky definitely gets bluer. So once that's done, we're going to go ahead and minimize this. So it brings it down. Maybe we'll play with a little bit of an extra filter of Brilliance and Warmth. Maybe add a little bit more saturation, a little bit more warmth, a little bit more saturation here. See if that does anything. It does darken it down a little bit. And I'm going to just bring it down just a little bit, not too much. I like that. So we're going to go ahead and enter and we're going to bring it back into Photoshop. All right, so once we're back in Photoshop, first thing we're going to do is we're going to address this skyline. I want the colors to pop more back here and over here. 
And the easiest way to do that is go ahead and just do a photo filter. So do a photo filter. We got a color that kind of matches. And we're just going to go ahead and hit, hit invert on that. And now it hides it. So only where I paint with a brush, it's going to pop in. So we can go ahead, zoom in a little bit, grab our brush, make sure it's uh, a low flow. And we're just going to bring in a little bit more of that color. Maybe around the buildings a little bit over here, over on this side. And we're just playing. Go back over here, a little bit on this side. And zoom out. And when we toggle on and off, it just gets a little bit brighter. Maybe do it down here in the reflection a little more. We're just trying to bring more color into this image. So, there you go. Another thing we can do is we can warm up the whole image itself. I think it needs to be warmed up. So we're going to go here, and I think we can do it with a warming filter. But I want to go a little bit more extreme on this one. So we're going to go to red. We're going to tone it down to about there. And I like that. But I don't want it on the buildings. So we're going to leave it white. We're just going to go ahead and switch our mask over to black, or our brush over to black, and we're just going to paint the buildings back in. We're just going to play here and there, just going over it, nice and good. And we're going to see that it's done a pretty good job. It looks nice. Another thing also we can do is that we can play with the sky and bring out the top part of it a little bit more blue. So go here, cooling filter, turn it down a little bit, invert that. We're gonna go a nice large brush, go to white, and we're just gonna brush it in just at the top. Same thing down here. Just separates it a little bit more. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and group all these together, group them, and we're gonna call it color. As you can see, the color, it's changing dramatically with that simple layering masking with we did with the photo filters. Next thing you do is go down here to the new layer, hold down option, that's gonna open up a new layer mask, we're going to go ahead and hit overlay, fill it with 50% gray, and we're going to rename it DB for Dodge and Burn. On this one, wherever I paint with white, it's going to go ahead and brighten the image. If I paint with black, it's going to darken the image. So just go ahead and start painting in on the buildings to try and brighten them up a little bit more. You can do this another way with just creating another mask and then layer masking in just the buildings. I find that the irregular brush strokes a little bit help create a little bit more natural look where light would just splatter on them occasionally, be a little bit random. So doing it like this also helps out creating an artistic look. Now we're just going to keep playing. This building over here is really dark so we might go a little more. A little bit brighter down here in the very bottom of the buildings because this is where all the lights are at so if you don't have any highlights we've kind of lost them so all you can really do is embrace the loss and brighten them up dramatically especially around where it's really busy and then down here we're going to go ahead and brighten up the buildings the reflections keep on doing that this will help show some of the reflection in the ground. Once that's done, it's looking better. And if it's a little bit too strong, just go ahead and dial it back a little bit. Now we've done the brightening, we can go ahead and do the dodging. So on here, wherever there's a building and it overlaps a little bit, it's sometimes helpful just to paint back in the shadow a little bit. 
Just a little bit of the shadow, because obviously light's not going to hit everywhere. So it really helps just to create a little bit of a 3D look. Once that's done, it's looking good. So we're going to go ahead and sharpen the image at the last little step, which is going to be really simple. We're going to go ahead and duplicate our color fix pro mask because it has everything on there. We're going to go ahead and rename it to sharp. We're going to go over here to filter, other, high pass filter. I always use the pixel count of three. You can use whatever, just try it out. On my cameras with 36 megapixel, pixel count of three works awesome. Once that's done, go over here to overlay. And that right there will sharpen the whole image. But we don't want it on the sky or the water. There's a couple different ways you can do this to make and blend out the sky and the ocean and the water. But the easiest way is probably going to be just creating a mask and then just painting in what you don't want. However, I like doing this. Since we have a sky and we have a definite color up in the sky, I'm going to go ahead and go to select color range. And you see that we've already got a pretty good color range selected. Right here is pretty good. And then when you click on the fuzziness, you can select here and there. So we've already done a pretty good shot, job selecting the color. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And then click OK. And what you've done is you created a mask that has a really nice straight edge across everything that's going to blend in and create a nice natural look. And if you zoom in, up on the buildings, you can see that it did a really good job of sharpening it, but not too crazy. So with sharpening all done, we'll go ahead and show you what the before and after. I'm going to select everything, do the magic, combine everything into one mask, combine everything, and here's the before and after. And it's really quickly done inside Photoshop. If you guys like this quick edit and want to see more, make sure you subscribe to my channel and give me a like on this video. Also, don't forget to check out the video I just made of my overnight trip over to Mount Fuji. I'll be doing a lot more of those in the city center of Tokyo itself. So, thanks again for watching and have a nice day. Mm -hmm.